the ideal of seva parmo dharma or service before self cross swords for the army's martial valor the anchor for the stability of the navy the himalayan eagle for the air force's aspiration to touch the skies with glory with its tri service ethos it has translated the dreams of our founding fathers into reality get ready to experience this stupendous journey and priceless heritage of india's pride the national defense academy Welcome viewers you're watching National Security with your host Kruti Mishra and today Sunset TV is reporting from the National Defense Academy Kharagpasla Pune In this edition we've packed everything for you from the glorious past of this institution to its remarkable achievements from the life of cadets to the induction of female cadets and most importantly how to turn your NDA dream into reality so come along with me on this mesmerizing journey Ever since its inception almost 7 decades ago the National Defense Academy has been standing tall as the premier foundational and joint institution of the armed forces of India it is indeed among the best in the world in developing the next generation of leaders of the armed forces to face myriad challenges and dynamics in ensuring the defense of India and the security of her citizens The NDA has lived up to the vision of its founding fathers and the incessant efforts of its service and civilian instructors across all ranks. It is their collective dedication that has given the NDA its unique ethos and maintained its high standards. The bonds of friendship formed here blossomed into invaluable assets in the years ahead and served to strengthen the fabric of our armed forces and our relations with armed forces of friendly countries it attracts hundreds of eager talented young people from various parts of the country drawn by the sparkle of uniforms and the exploits of real life heroes the green horns here are groomed in leadership courage camaraderie integrity and honesty The cadets brimming with vitality and with a burning desire to tread the chosen paths of a warrior join as young adolescents and after 3 years graduate as potential military leaders ready to lead men and women beyond the call of duty the essential qualities of endurance uniformity military bearing pride in one's self and most importantly implicit obedience to order are great trumped and in great into the very persona of cadets through a well structured training calendar it's uh, through a very very you know deliberate and a exhaustive training process where we focus on various facets of training be it academics be it uh, service subjects be it joint training and also developing a sense of discipline 
The training is absolutely well-rounded and there are about four to five spheres where we focus upon. And the end result is that we want to produce scholar warriors who are capable of tackling any kind of challenge they are exposed to in future. The unique achievement of the NDA is perhaps fostering of jointmanship, the Brahmastra of tomorrow's warfare. The NDA, therefore, is a very unique model which focuses on developing lasting bonds of friendship to ultimately spur that elusive inter-services cooperation that is so very essential for synchronization of all components of military power in order to address a common military objective. Therefore, the entire training is characterized by trust and confidence in each other's service, mutual respect for each other's capability and healthy cooperation. The cradle of leadership is also the nursery of jointmanship, such that transgresses all bureaucratic and turf-related hurdles during the later part of each other's careers and facilitates synergy between the olive greens, the Prussian blues and the sky blues turning them all maroon when it really matters. Actually, NDA is known as the cradle of military leadership. Here, young boys and girls are carefully molded by expert hands to emerge as very successful leaders. There are three important facets of leadership. What a leader is, what a leader knows, and what a leader does. So at NDA, we primarily concentrate on the first part, that is building on the values, morals and ethics of the leader, that is what a leader is. Now to do this, we have got various methods. It is primarily done through the demonstrative behavior and idealization, which they see in their DSS. The DSS demonstrate a behavior by which the cadets imbibe correct values and morals through them. It is also done through classroom discussions which are there. We have got a very well crafted syllabus for that and we also inculcate self-discipline in the cadets which is done through a very robust honor code and all the cadets follow this honor code in letter and spirit. The history of an institution can be pieced together by linking landmark events in their perspective. While edifices of wood, brick and stone stand testimony to human endeavor, personalities leave their imprint on institutions altering and shaping history. Over the years, the NDA has evolved as an icon of national strength and character. Conceived as a national war memorial, the institution is the most cherished jewel in the services crown. Six years of fierce combat during World War II had underlined the need for joint action in modern warfare and a synergy between the services to provide a significant edge in times of conflict. Prior to independence, Lord Mountbatten and Lord Ismain formed a committee under the chairmanship of Commander-in-Chief of India, Field Marshal Sir Cloud, and assigned the committee the task of examining the feasibility of establishing an institution for joint training of officers in the Indian Armed Forces. However, before the blueprint could be presented, India gained independence, and Field Marshal ceased to be the Commander-in-Chief of the undivided Indian Armed Forces. The blueprint of the Academy, as envisaged by Field Marshal Cloud, remained in cold storage for about eight months before Sardar Vallabhai Patel, the then Deputy Prime Minister of India, sought the report and brought it back to life. An action plan to commission a permanent war academy at Kharakvasla near Pune began simultaneously and on 6th of October 1949, the foundation stone was laid. On 1st of January 1949, the Indian Military Academy was re as the Armed Forces Academy comprising the military wing and the newly commissioned Joint Services Wing. On 1st of January 1950, ahead of India becoming a republic, it was renamed as the National Defence Academy. Each cadet participates in three camps during his training at the academy. Camps simulate field-like situations and ensure development of physical endurance and mental courage, thereby imbibing qualities of conviction and self-belief. Every cadet passing out of the academy is self-confident and is ready to take on any challenge on or off the battlefield. Here at the academy, boys transition into men and now girls into women warriors. No two situations in life or war can be similar. 
That's why the National Defence Academy provides training of the highest standard, keeping in mind the requirements of modern-day warfare. Three formative years at the National Defence Academy instill in the cadets a sense of belonging and oneness with the alma mater. Breaking bread and training together engenders the spirit of camaraderie and forms the bedrock of joint manship that lasts a lifetime. During a cadet's journey at the NDA, he or she merges the identity with others and gains the solace of a herd, the power of a team and the leverage of a group. The cadet's first view of the academy is a three Shakti gate, after which the cadet gets the first view of the majestic Sudan block. The adjutant's office allots coordinates to each cadet, which becomes his or her home for three years. Cadets from various states and diverse backgrounds and abilities are allotted squadrons in a manner that ensures homogeneity in each squadron. While moving from the adjutant's office to the squadron, each cadet is mesmerized by the views of the President's Drive, the Salaria Square and the Ashoka Pillar. The story of the valor of Captain G. Salaria not only enthralls the young minds but also generates an enormous josh that he or she dots on the heart and sleeve not just during the years at the academy, but for the rest of the life. 1965, Captain Slaria made an ultimate sacrifice, leading a bayonet and a kukri charge against a formidable enemy force in Congo. For his unwavering and dauntless leadership and extraordinary valor, Captain Slaria was posthumously awarded highest gallantry award from Veer Chakra. Belgian glass doors depicting the mythological horn of plenty extends a tempting welcome into the Central Cadets' mess. An important landmark of the NDA, it promotes bonhomie and camaraderie. The concept of the single mess aims at promoting joint services togetherness. It is a home away from home, where young cadets break bread together and develop a strong bond. At the entrance of the cadets' mess, a chair leans against an empty table laid out for one. It is a mark of respect in memory of those alumni of the academy who are listed as missing in action or been taken prisoners of war. It signifies hope that they will return one day. Cadets are organized into five battalions. The first four battalions comprise four squadrons, while the fifth comprises of two squadrons. Each squadron has its own individual nickname. They are named as Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Golf, Hunter, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Panther, Quebec and Romeo. The Honour Code is a set of ethical principles and guidelines what a cadet should follow. And not only at NDA, he should follow subsequently in services as well. So, over here, it is required to be taught to cadets. Why? Because cadets come from various walks of life and social strata. So accordingly, once they come over here, they are very well motivated. They hard, hard work too much and they cope up with various situations very well. However, since they are young and at an impressionable age, therefore, it is required to be taught to them. A cadet of the National Defence Academy abides by the motto, of service before self. The entry into the academy requires him or her to pledge to the nation, which is done under the aegis of the adjutant at the heart of remembrance, the sanctum sanctorum of the NDA. The hut serves as a constant reminder to the cadets of the lofty traditions of valor, courage and sacrifice of the predecessors. Before the start of every term, the adjutant narrates to the cadets the importance of academy honor court and the cadet's pledge at the Habibullah Hall. During a cadet's stay at the academy, he or she reminds himself or herself of the pledge to the nation by reciting the academy prayer. Cadets who enter the National Defence Academy come from every walk of life and social strata. Each one is highly motivated and copes well with the demanding and intensive curriculum. However, since the cadets are young and impressionable, it is also essential that they imbibe the right principles and are guided by a tangible code of conduct that clearly spells out the right and the wrong. 
The first batch of female cadets was inducted in the NDA in the year 2022. The training is conducted in a gender neutral manner and they are prepped to lead the troops on the battlefields just like their male counterparts. A significant and transformative change occurred in 2022 with the commencement of female candidate recruitment. This marked a historic milestone for the NDA as 57 women cadets were inducted into the academy. The decision to recruit female cadets shattered traditional gender barriers, making way for a more inclusive and diverse institution. This step is not only a reflection of societal progress, but also highlights the growing recognition of women's capabilities and contributions in the defence sector. The induction of female candidates not only fosters gender equality, but also promotes a more diverse and inclusive learning environment within the NDA. By bringing a different perspectives and experiences, these women cadets contribute to the holistic development of the academy and its trainees. Furthermore, gender diversity in the NDA nurtures a culture of mutual respect, breaking down stereotypes and challenging preconceived notions about women's role in the armed forces. It also sends a powerful message that the NDA values talent, competence and dedication regardless of gender. They are leaving their mark significantly as compared to their male counterparts, be it, any, be it in any area like for example academics, drill, equitation or outdoor training. Once these cadets leave the portals of this academy, they will be well equipped to handle any kind of leadership roles which come to them because they have been trained here at the National Defence Academy. Here's how the cadets are trained at NDA to face the challenges of battlefield like a true army soldier. The army training team at the NDA trains the cadets to be proficient in basic soldiering skills to understand and imbibe the mechanics of leading a section as part of a platoon in combat. Herein, endeavour is made to imbibe into a cadet plethora of qualities which makes the bedrock for transformation into an ideal leader and gallant soldier. They follow the battlecraft of the past while using modern age technical gadgets. Technical gadgets like GPS and simulators to give a glimpse of futuristic combat to a cadet and hone the basic skills today which will make them a scholar warrior capable of understanding modern warfare in future. We are at Karakwasla Lake in Pune right now and let's see how cadets are trained to sail with Vala. The aim of the naval training team is to ensure that all naval cadets imbibe basic knowledge of navigation, seamanship and bridgemanship in both theoretical and practical aspects. In order to introduce cadets to sailing and enhance familiarization with water, a sailing expedition is conducted for naval cadets. During the expedition, they are exposed to sailing in whalers, appreciation of wind direction, honing of skills to sail whaler boats and basic principles of sailing. Here's how the cadets at the National Defence Academy are trained to touch the sky with glory. Before taking to the skies, the budding aviators are thoroughly familiarised with their machines. This gives them an insight into the working of the aircraft system and all procedures and techniques to be followed to get airborne into the blue skies. Attention is given to all aspects of flying training to enable the cadets to be in line with Air Force ethos prevalent in the flying training establishments or units of the Indian Air Force. The trainees also fly sorties as part of their syllabus. The training equips the cadets with mental, moral and physical attributes to cope with battlefield challenges and lead troops to victory in conventional non-conventional and asymmetrical 
conflicts. On the physical side, equestrian training attempts to strengthen muscles, improve coordination, enhance motor skills of the body and increase core strength. It is this stress relieving connect with the animal that makes one overcome fear, create a sense of responsibility, develop a sense of compassion and that acts as a team building exercise and eventually makes a cadet confident. The nurturing and eventual build-up of the non-verbal communication skills is unparalleled. The three-year course here is split into six terms during which a cadet learns science, technology, arts and military subject. Each term, the training regimen includes physical conditioning such as drill, physical training, swimming and according to the approved syllabus, an entire gamut of games and adventure activities. In August 1973, a milestone was achieved when it was degree linked and affiliated to prestigious Jawaharlal Nehru University. Considering the growing complexities of present day warfare, the academic syllabi has been updated and further enriched with defense application courses. Computer education at the academy began in 1987 and came of age when the first batch of 25 cadets of the 97th course graduated with a BSc degree in computer science in December 1999. The NDA takes into consideration the need to develop a cadet's personality into that of a soldier scholar. Thus, it has always promoted technology-oriented and innovative learning processes to hone a cadet's skill and help him or her develop lateral thinking. The aim is to sharpen a cadet's analytical abilities so that he or she can take well-informed decisions. Drill is the bedrock of discipline at the National Defence Academy. It teaches implicit obedience to orders and grooms a cadet into perfectly turned out officer with an impressive military bearing, an erect posture and a smart gait. It helps the cadet develop effective command and control of the troops, both in war and peace. The three principles of drill, steadiness, smartness and coordination are drilled into the persona of the cadet through a well-structured lesson plan and the cadet imbibes the qualities of endurance, uniformity and military bearing. Far from being an individual regiment, drill is at its best during the drill competition every term, during which the winning squadron backs the most glamorous trophy at the NDA. The passing out parade marks the completion of a successful term held at the Khetrapal Parade Ground 
The unique parade comprises over a thousand participating cadets who bid farewell to their senior colleagues. The adjutant on the horse accompanies the passing out cadets to the final steps. A masterly display of the drill movement synchronized with the accompanying band embed long-lasting memories in participants as well as viewers. On successful completion of the course, Army cadets proceed to Indian Military Academy at Dehradun, Naval cadets to the Indian Naval Academy at Ezimala, and Air Force cadets to the Air Force Academy at Dindigul in Hyderabad. After completion of one year of training at their respective academies, they are commissioned as officers into their respective services. So if you are nurturing your NDA dream, here's what you need to do. The entrance test of the NDA is held twice a year, NDA 1 and NDA 2. The first notification is issued in January and the second notification comes around June. The first entrance exam is conducted around April and the second around September. NDA application form comprises of two parts. The examination is conducted by Union Public Service Commission and the interested candidates can apply online at the official website www.upsconline.nic.in A candidate must be an unmarried male or female and must be a citizen of India or a subject of Nepal or a person of Indian origin who has migrated from Pakistan, Burma, Sri Lanka and East African countries of Kenya, Uganda, the United Republic of Tanzania Zambia, Zaire and Ethiopia or Vietnam with the intention of permanently settling in India. For Army, the educational qualification is 12th pass of 10 plus 2 pattern of school or equivalent examination by a state education board or university. For Air Force and Navy, 12th pass of 10 plus 2 pattern of school or equivalent with physics, chemistry and mathematics conducted by a state education board or a university. Candidates must be physically and mentally fit according to the prescribed physical standards or guidelines given in the notification. To be deemed medically fit, a candidate must be in good physical and mental health and free from any disease or syndrome or disability that is likely to interfere with the efficient performance of military duties in any terrain, climate or season, including sea, air or in remote areas in austere conditions with no medical aid. Candidates also should be free of medical conditions which require frequent visit to medical facilities and use of any drug or aid. A candidate who has resigned or withdrawn on disciplinary grounds from any of the training academies of armed forces is not eligible to apply. Selection procedure encompasses three stages which include a written test conducted by UPSC, an interview by service selection boards or SSBs and finally the medicals. Post clearing of all these stages, final merit list is prepared and successful candidates are invited to join the academy uh, subject to the vacancies available for each service. Detailed instructions regarding the eligibility and selection procedure are published biannually in form of gazette notifications and everyone must read these uh, notifications carefully before applying for National Defence Academy. Over the years, the National Defence Academy has grown from strength to strength. It has proved to be a global centre of excellence for military training and its interactions with foreign military academies have increased many fold. The institution was founded to carry forward this concept of jointmanship and this concept cannot be more relevant than what it is today. You would have heard that the armed forces are now marching on to integration, jointness and eventually theatrization. Therefore, the role of this academy assumes even greater significance. And I'm sure that our training, you know, methodologies, pedagogies and infrastructure would also evolve according to the environment and the cadets we produce would be capable of handling any kind of future challenge in any kind of new warfare. 
There is no doubt that each service will continue to have a plethora of training centers for various kinds of specialization. But there can be only one NDA, the only joint academy. With deep sense of reverence, it's time for us to bid adieu. With camera persons DK Pandey and Jitain Divnegi and camera assistant Riyasat Ali and Priti Mishra signing off from the National Defence Academy.